and a little bit practical experience uh, about using the PyMol, where you can check uh, like inside of them there in the four polypeptide structure there is a heme in the stick form in, in all of four of those structures in the center and uh, you can find the molecular weight you can check the alpha helix structures like there are so many so one two three four five six seven there are around seven alpha helix structures in this uh, so there are many information that you can get out of it. So that was the basic idea about it. So that's it. So I will, uh, hope you all had a good uh, yeah. You can uh, to find out the catalytic center. Uh, it's written in the extracristallography, like where it is residing in the PDB structure. When you read about it in the website. So the catalytic structure in the paper of that crystallography, it's written that where, where it's residing, where is in the core motive, where it, uh, where it will be working. So that's a very good question, Sanjit. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. So, okay. So we are done with this part. Now I will li like to take you CRISPR. This video is a bit complicated, but I hope you are able to understand a bit about CRISPR, how it works. Uh, CRISPR could work. So let's see. So let it be load for some time. Any questions about PDB, RCBS, PyMol? Uh, it was it was just basic basic understanding for you. Uh, but Chid, how do you know this thing type for the hemoglobin? Yeah, it is. Uh, it is being purely documented and only then they are coming on the website. Otherwise, they are published in journals. Only then these PDP files are coming on there. So this this is a whole, whole structure biology. This is a whole new science of structure biology. So these biologists are, are playing a big role for that. Molecular docking. What is molecular? Could you explain me? It's it's good to interact with your students. Even I have not that vast knowledge as that you are having, um, because the science is such a big field that something. If you are not aware of the updates, that you are far behind uh, with the things. So keep yourself update with the things. How things are. Uh, otherwise, we are far behind then. Anyone knows what is molecular docking is? Please share it here. Okay. I mean, pi mole and j mole. I mean, within the pi mole and j mole, both are both are good actually. Uh, it's it's just a preference for pi mole is very old one that I have told you. Uh, maybe j mole is advanced version, but I like pi mole. I did my whole PhD with pi mole to check the cysteines and disulfide bridges. Even my German PI Florian Dister, Doctor Florian Dister, he also liked that. So we just sit on that and and start looking for it. I can I can show you some application of it after that. How I use PyMol for my research, how it was uh, it's useful, so much useful for my work. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So it is. So let's check how uh, CRISPR Cas9 uh, work. So CRISPR Cas9 is a type of immune system discovered in bacteria. Scientists have adapted its component uh, components into the biotechnology tool for editing DNA. So to to cut or to add. So we can do all things with this CRISPR Cas9. It's a made up of cutting enzyme Cas9 and programmable RNA molecule, guided RNA, gRNA, 
and CRISPR-Cas9 can be usually uh, precisely target nearly any genes. So let's check how it is works. So first is targeted, then it's bind, then it's cleave, then the DNA repair. So basically four steps are happening in this CRISPR-Cas9. Let's go down. So this is your uh, CRISPR-Cas9 molecule. So this part is your guided RNA, this side, this is your CRISPR-Cas9 and this is our cellular DNA. So guided RNA, it's a sequence that is synthesized to match the target of sequence of interest such as sequence with a particular gene. So it just helps you to get to the particular sequence and whereas Cas9, CRISPR stands for clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. I will repeat clustered uh, clustered regularly interspace space palindromic uh, interspace short palindromic repeats which are repeat sequence found in DNA genome of bacteria and Cas9 stands for CRISPR associated with the protein 9 and it is an endonucleus meaning it's an enzyme that cuts at cuts nucleic acids so basically it's it's meant to be cut the nucleic acids and it's present on the protein 9 of the bacteria that's why it's called Cas9 this one so let's go further so it's looking for its target so there in the red color is its target for CRISPR-Cas9 so now so what will happen in targeting uh, basically one way to think that the cas 9 RNA complex is a molecular caesar so it's a molecular caesars which program the GPS uh, this guided RNA so cas 9 is a nucleus type of enzyme that cleaves DNA cas 9 will cleave it and it's recognized the binds to a three nucleotide sequence what is called PAM it will identify this PAM here this cas 9 uh, and then uh, ubiquitously it's throughout the cell genome it's present ubiquitously everywhere uh, so scientists synthesize the guided RNA to contain sequence of about 20 RNAs 20 nucleotides that matches a particular sequence in the cell DNA that they want to target so this guided RNA is a sequence which has particular sequence uh, to your target DNA Cas9 is to cut with the help of palm uh, when the guided ERN is guided to Cas9, it will guide Cas9 to target sequence. The target sequence can nearly any sequence as long, uh, long as it is occurs near the PAM motif. It could be as much as long as, if possible, but should be near to the PAM motif. And it can be part of gene coding region or part, uh, regularly that uh, scientists want to change in some way, that we want to change uh, in, in, in some way like that way. So that's it. So let's go further. So here, once it's bind to the parent motif, Cas9, Cas9 is bound, bound to the parent motif, it's unwind the DNA molecule. And if the DNA at the location perfectly matches sequence of about 20 nucleosides of this uh, gRNA, guided RNA, uh, matching and RNA will bind through the complementary base pairing so it starts making complementary base pairing with that after attaching so it cuts so its binding is happening so this gRNA came so it attaches there it attaches there now afterwards what is happening is um, a cleaving is happening so DNA RNA pairing triggers Cas9 to change its three dimensional structure and activates its nucleus activity and Cas9 cleaves both DNA strands at its upstream of PAM so at the upstream of PAM uh, so you can see the yellow part is gone it's cut it out each other and our uh, gRNA got attached to that part with the three nucleotides so this is the cleavage site. The position where DNA strand is cut by the Cas9, typically three nucleotide upstream of the PAM site. So up three, three nucleotide of the PAM site.
so it's cut it out then after the cleaving so DNA repair cell contains enzymes that re uh, repair the DNA standard DNA and repairs naturally error prone and will lead to the mutations that may inactivate the gene so cleave DNA at the precise location is one of more applications of the Cas9 so we cu cut the DNA at precise position and that's what we are looking for and then DNA breaks So cell will contain enzymes that repair the double-stranded DNA uh, with the addition of uh, new uh, nucleotides here in this case and we will lead to the mutations that may inactivate the gene. So whatever the functions that we were looking for they will not happen because we have removed the specific part of the genes that we were uh, after the cleavage with the Cas9 and addition of the new complementary DNA with the help of CRISPR Cas9. So here at the end you have your target DNA in the, in the whole case and your repaired DNA is repaired nicely and this is your palm sequence and here is your mutation has been done. So because of this it will not function as it should be. So that's it I guess so that's how CRISPR Cas9 basics works so I will share these links later with you um, today to know more better about it so all good students So let's take to the next part. Uh, let's close this. Let's close this. Let's start the session now. gel electrophoresis so in this part I will be dealing with you uh, various types of uh, gel electrophoresis uh, various type of electrophoresis actually uh, its types and what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, what are the applications are which one is widely used so all these things will be uh, done in this part um, electrophoresis techniques so basically it's a physical method of analyzing analyzing the separation of compounds that are capable of acquiring electric charge in conducting electrodes so we have electrodes and we check the separation of the compounds that are capable of acquiring the electric charge and based on that uh, we separate our molecules uh, in this electrophoresis so electrophoresis may be defined as a migration of the charged uh, particle through solution under the influence of external electric field so under the ex uh, external electric field uh, your your particles can move in the solutions uh, and hence migration could happen and this is called as electrophoresis so ions that are suspended between two electrodes tend to travel towards electrodes that bears opposite charges that's obviously uh, so an uh, opposite way the, the ions will, will move uh, towards the electrodes. Uh, then uh, types of electrophoresis. There are two types of electrophoresis we are going to talk about. One is zone electrophoresis. Second is moving boundary electrophoresis. In the first one with the zone electrophoresis, it is of four types that is paper electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis, thin layer electrophoresis, cellulose acetate electrophoresis. Further in the moving boundary, it will be capillary uh, isotachophoresis, uh, isoelectric focusing that we have discussed, immunoelectrophoresis that we will also do with the immuno and antibody. So we have discussed quite a number of things uh, quite before. So basically we will done with the basic part how these various electrophoresis uh, will be covered in this topic are done. So first, uh, first foremost, 
comes the zone electrophoresis that it involves the migration of charged particles on the sporting media paper cellulose uh, acetate membrane starch gels polyacrylamide they, that are the main things that are being used in this the components and the components in this case are separated uh, and dis distributed into discrete zone in the sporting media uh, various advantages of these are its cost is low easy maintenance uh, sample quantity of samples can be analyzed the major disadvantages that we see is is unsuitable for the accurate mobility and isoelectric point determination you cannot check that in this part um, sporting media due to the present sporting media technical complications are possible such as capillary flow electrosmosis uh, absorption adsorption molecular savings are introduced so all these things are possible in this case also uh, this is the general principle, general method of operation, how it is done. First is the saturation of the method with the buffer, then sample applications, electrophoretic separation, then removal of the sporting media. The instrumentation that we need in zone electrophoresis are electrophoretic chamber, electrodes, diffusion members, sporting or stabilizing media. So this is the first part of the electrophoresis. This is paper electrophoresis. Uh, these are mostly not used in the labs in my life i never see uh, but maybe in the highly proteomics labs big labs they might be using so just get to they will be good for your paper point of view from examination point of view uh, these slides will be necessary but if you want to go for practical point of view gel electrophoresis isoelectric focusing 2d gel uh, they are they are and capillary electrophoresis they are the highly used in the labs most most of the times in the proteomics field so uh, let's continue so paper electrophoresis of two types horizontal paper and vertical uh, paper electrophoresis where you where your uh, samples are you have electrode electrolyte on the left and right positive and negative uh, attached to the battery and in the center is a pencil line and then there's a paper filter attached to both of them so horizontal and vertical here the uh, major structures it looks like where your sample is point here in the sample application point in the vertical in this here and here in this uh, horizontal your sa sample application is done there then there is a positive electrode negative electrode with the samples attached to it with the, the rods here and you have buffer solution in it and air tighting housing component is there in both cases um, yeah so filter paper such as Wattman paper and Wattman number 1 or number 3 millimeter in strip of 3 or 5 centimeter is widely used in this case and separations takes around 12 to 14 hours it's take a lot of time but it's economical easy to use uh, major disadvantages as electrosmosis is happening uh, sometimes certain compounds proteins hydrophilic molecules cannot resolve due to the absorption and uh, ionogenic properties of paper resulting in tailing and distortion of com uh, component bands so it has quite a number of disadvantages also not good for the, the things then there's a continuous electrophoresis in this uh, you have sample reservoir on the top and then you resolve your uh, samples uh, via folding like this and then you have a sample collection like differentially different way so this is your filter paper this is a positive this is negative uh, so used for preparative uh, scale purposes predetermined sample volume of 0.2 ml per minute through the wall device is applied continuously on the center of the paper uh, PD of 500 volt is applied after completion of electrophoresis filter is removed from the apparatus and stained to the locate separate components so now next part is uh, gel electrophoresis uh, in this uh, separation is brought through the molecular sieving technique so mainly the molecular sieves are used in this case based based on the molecular size of substances so gel material act as a molecular sieve in this case so gel is collo uh, colloid in solid form 99% is water it is important that it supports the media is electrically neutral different types of gels which can be used are agar, agar oros, gel, starch, cephadex, polyacrylate gel so these are the various gels you can use for your gel electrophoresis porous gel that act as a sieve or by retarding or some case uh, completely obstructing the movement of molecules while allowing the smaller molecules to migrate uh, freely so here you can see 
I have shown you this. Uh, we will we will deal with this diagram uh, in a in a second just now. So it is of two methods. It could be done vertical and horizontal. Uh, some difference between agar and agarose gel. So agar is a mixture of polysaccharides extracted from the seaweeds, and agarose is highly purified uncharged polysaccharide derived from agar actually. So agarose gel is made from the agar, which is in a polysaccharide extracted from the seaweeds. So agarose is chemically disaccharide repeating units of 3,6 anhydro L -galacto galactose. So this is come, come sometimes in the objective type portions. Uh, agarose also dissolves uh, when added to the boiling liquid. It remains liquid until the temperature is lower than the 40 degrees Celsius. The pore size may be predetermined by adjusting the concentration of agarose gel in the gel. And agarose gel is quite fragile. They could be broken very easily. Uh, and they are called hydrocolloids and they are held together by formation of weak hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic bonds. They are together like that. So what are the advantages of using these gels? Easy to prepare, agar is required, resolution is superior than the filter paper, uh, it's, it's quite higher. Uh, beyond that, sharp zones are obtained in this uh, less absorption, recovery of protein is good, good method for preparative purposes. Uh, okay, electrosmosis is high in this case, uh, one of the disadvantage, resolution is less uh, to the polychromate gels. Uh, application it's used widely in the immunoelectrophoresis. So this is the structure. This is in the uh, initially in the solid state. Looks like this. Uh, when we take the temperature around 100 degrees Celsius, so no sorry at 45 degrees Celsius it's gel. Then uh, with the time it's make this final gel structure. But when you make temperature to 100 degrees Celsius back, it's again comes to back uh, into this initial gel structure and again with the 100 degrees Celsius it come to this solid state again. So, gel electrophoresis, a short review. Sometimes they don't work. Just wait a second. So this is the basic apparatus that you need. You need an electrophoretic uh, uh, voltage regarder. Uh, you need Appendorf, you need pipettes. Uh, you need to calculate the protein DNA, how much it is there. Um, that's the basic, basic things that you need. So let's start. Let's start with it. This is the electrophoretic unit looks like one side is positive this is positive this is negative black is negative red is positive just remember that so attach the red one with the red one a black one with the black one there is no sound for some strange reason so you put your gel with the combs in it, uh, you put the buffer on the left and on the right. To the maximum level. These are your samples.
so pipette so carefully you push you take your samples and pour it into the well like this carefully just when you pouring it just keep keep take care that it should not go out it everything is inside the chamber everything inside the well chambers because if it goes to the other part then your results will be different so everything has to be separated and nicely done so we had our buffer we have our gel agros gel we have our samples everything is done so we will run it at some voltage turn on the machine just take care that the, you you have put enough the voltage uh, sign here and then you make it to 100 voltage which is equivalent to 400 ampere and you put the time for i guess for 60 minutes for one hour then you pr press the button run you see started your gel starts to run so this is how your dna start to resolve it started to move migrate in the gel smaller particles will be downstairs large particles will be on the top you see so it's got separated and hence you can check your results so it was something just to show you a practical aspect like how it is done in practically it was not in details for details let's go to the virtual lab So gel electrophoresis virtual lab. So let's start. So you are holding a plastic tube with some clear liquid in it. You have told that liquid contains DNA of several length. So our job is to check uh, of which different length our DNA is. And how we will do it? We will do it with the help of gel electrophoresis. So within that append, append off, there are various size of DNA molecules were present. Some are short, some are medium, some are long. And we want to differentiate each of them uh, using this technique. So to check them, uh, we have this technique called as gel electrophoresis because to check DNA of which size is which is quite difficult to see by naked eye. So microscope will be very difficult to do so. So that's why we do gel electrophoresis to check the wire DNA size molecular markers, how where our uh, how much size the DNA is present in it. So let's start. That was some introduction.
so the gel in, in is the filter that sorts the DNA strand it's like a sponge made up jello with many small holes in it so this jello has many many hole, uh, holes in it these, these gels and you pour your samples like this and you place your DNA into holes at one end of the gel and press forward and one side is negative one is positive as your DNA is negatively charged because of the phosphate groups it will move towards the positive side so your DNA is moving within the holes these holes so your DNA got separated according to the size with each, within each different samples some has short uh, middle and longer it has only short and middle it has short and longer it has middle and uh, and longer so according to that they are all separated um, further then after the staining we can check each type like where how much stain the DNA is we can check them like that so let's start uh, in reality to run the gel uh, with various steps of a gel electrophoresis first step will be to make up the gel then second is to set up the gel apparatus then the loading the DNA sample into the gel then hook up the electro electric current via using that power rat machine then stain the gel and analyze the results that's it so let's start with the laboratory now so you need uh, a gross flask gel mold buffer gel comb microwave so these are the basic uh, things that we need so seaweed agrose we take some powder of it and pour into the conical flask then add some liquid buffer to the solution so that electric charge could be done through the gel so open this the microwave and heat it a little bit so that the agros heat heat the mixture so agros get melted in the buffer so it's in the liquid form and we can pour this into the mold uh, where it takes solidify for formation so we are making the gel at the moment and before it gets solidified we add the these combs to make well inside it well chambers so this will be done for half an hour so we will speed up the clock and then check if the holes are done carefully we remove it so yes holes are done now it's time to set up the gel apparatus we add the buffer in the electrophoresis box like we saw there we just need to add this buffer to this and add your sample so this is your loading buffer DNA sample DNA size different standards micro pipette and micro tips so because, because of all these we can start our experiments so loading buffer is added to our DNA sample and DNA size standards so that uh, it could be heavy and we can see also the image uh, where it is moving so let's start and DNA uh, size standards will let you know the size of your DNA where, where does your uh, DNA size stands for so we will add the loading buffer take some loading buffer add into the DNA sample then suck up little bit 
and then add it to the first chamber of your experiment like we did in that method or in the video nice job now we add the standard we took the standard and pour it into the chamber now it's done now it's time to put the electrophoric chamber to the voltage to each parts of it black attached to this red belongs to this and we turn on the machine and here uh, within the chamber when uh, gel is off and uh, gel is off and running let's look into the gel and see what's happening so you can check tiny air bubbles starts to come out at the electrodes of buffers uh, that means uh, the it is running the your electrophoretic chamber is running with the gel and you will see slowly like like slowly your uh, movement of your uh, movement of your samples towards downwards it started to have so our gel is finished now it's time to stain the gel and analyze the results so with the help of ethidium bromide which attached to the base pairs we can check where our dna is, is uh, present so we put these gels so it will take about half an hour uh, half an hour to stain the dna in the gel and we will speed up the clock for us so it will take half an hour and then we check under the ultra uv light box so turn on the uv box so um so these are our, our samples this is a ladder and we have to tell by writing here uh, what size belongs to what size so this will be around how much and this will be around how much and this will be around how much so i take assumption that this is around 1200 maybe i am not sure and this is maybe 3500 base pairs and top one is yeah 6000 base pairs so let's see if the answers are right or not top one is 6000 base pairs second one is 3500 third one was 1500 it was in the somehow in middle so that's how you can differentiate between your molecules and you can calculate the size of a sample with the help of dna standard and in this whole gel electrophoresis uh, uh in this steps so that's it uh that was the main principle of uh, gel electrophoresis its mechanism its working its ready to go how you can work in the lab and it's very widely used uh, in the experiments so go for it so any question so far mm wavy bands uh, might be uh because of the sample i guess sample preparation was not done good or maybe the gel the gel that you have prepared uh it has some some lacking some something went wrong so that you got wavy uh, wavy bands in that so some some problem might be uh, happening because of the gel or other in the samples somewhere so guys i will take just 5 minutes break it's 607 then i see you 605 Six or seven, let's say, and then see you at thirteen, six, nine or thirteen, not six. It's twenty-one thirteen. Yeah, see you in five minutes.
take some break chill pill
to class i'm back uh, so let's continue with further so further sds page uh, that we know that we use for the pro uh, protein western blotting uh, just something about page here polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis it is prepared by polymerizing acryl, uh, acryl, polymerizing acryl, sorry, acrylamide monomers uh, in the presence of methylene-based acrylamide to crosslink the monomers. So, structure of acrylamide is CH2, double bond with CH2, CH and CONH2. So, like this. So, there are n number of the same molecule uh, within this uh, polyacrylamide gel, and they are held together by covalent crosslinks. And they are separated on the base of charge to mass ratio and molecular size, phenomena called as molecular sieving. Advantages are wide range of pH and temperature is possible, different pore size can be formed, uh, simple and separation speed is good comparatively. So, page can be classified into two types that is, native page and denatured page, uh, denaturing, denatured page. Or STS page, native page. Uh, it's a it's a it's a gel in which we run in the non denaturating conditions, so that the analytes analyte structure is maintained. So we maintain the same structure as it it has to be, uh, and separation is based upon the charge, size, and shape, and useful for separation or purification of mixture of uh, proteins. Uh, Whereas in the denatured is based mainly upon the molecular weight of proteins, commonly method to determine the molecular weight of proteins, uh, and used for checking purity of proteins. How the how much is pure is your protein is uh, in that way. So about page procedure, uh, we will see uh, in in Western blotting actually how it is done in more details. So mainly it is done with the buffer uh, with the electrode negative to positive and you have a gel inside and then your sample is coming out as a protein bandings with the protein bonds so in this case in the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis gel is poured vertically between two glass plates like we saw yesterday uh, uh, late night we were doing protein isolation so at the end we did this with the pyrod uh, staff scientist from pyrod shows you how our 2D gel electrophoresis is done. So he used pre-cast uh, gels. So it was already cast between two plates and you added your samples on top and then you see the bands uh, like that. Then uh, slab page uh, that we have discussed just now and visualization you can check it with the help of ethidium bromide or silver commercial blue dye commercial blue dye these are things three things that you could use and uh, to fluorescence it you can use ultraviolet uh, light uh, with the help of a photograph or you can use a radioactivity to check in the auto radiogram uh, of your gel so these two methods so, but preferred is mostly the first uh, the previous one with the ultraviolet light because it's less harmful uh, I hope we are going good my light has gone in my house um, yeah STS page we will we will we will we will see uh, in the western blotting all good bacho everything is going fine as usual okay great so bacho STS page all these things uh, they are mainly uh, uh, teaching you because of uh, you will have some content for your examinations so please uh, go through them so this is the main uh, animation that is showing that according to your size decreasing size uh, you your your separation is done in this case uh, and then further uh, suspension of granular starch should be boiled in buffer to give a clear colloidal suspension this is starch could be also used instead of agar uh, and advantages are like it's high resolving power sharp zones are obtained uh, component dissolves can be covered in reasonable yield can be used for analytical as well as preparative electrophoresis the disadvantage is it has electrosmotic effect and variation in the pore size of the batch 
from batch to batch um this one is vertical versus uh, uh horizontal gel electrophoresis that we were discussed before uh, in this sample is mainly the application is the sample is mixed with the gel soaking is done with the filters in the samples the detection by staining or by uh, direct gravity matter or uv absorptions then comes the pulse field gel electrophoresis uh, which is a technique used to separate large dna molecules the one which are very big uh, DNA molecules and applying to the gel matrix uh, electric field that periodically change the directions and electric field is also changing the directions in a zigzag motion so that's how you change uh, have a difference uh, you can differentiate between your large molecules in this case um, so while in general small fragments can find their way through the gel matrix more easily than the large DNA frag fragments a threshold length exists above 30 to 50 kilo base pairs where all large fragments will run at the same rate and appear in a gel as a single large diffuse band however the periodic changes of field directions various length of DNA react to the change at different rates over the course of time with consistent changing of directions each band will begin to separate more and more even at very large lengths so thus separation of very large dna pieces using pfg is made possible so voltage is periodically switched voltage is also periodically switched in this case among three directions one that runs to the central axis of the gel two run at the nine, uh, gel at 60 degree of either sides so here so one uh, gel is running on the 90 degree and one on the running on the 60 degrees of the, of the gel. The pulse times are equal for each direction resulting in a net forward migration of DNA. So at the end, uh, DNA that, that you are running, they should move forward. They should move forward in a zigzag motion. So applications uh, of PFGE is mainly for the genotyping or genetic fingerprinting. Uh, and it's considered to be gold standard in, in the epidemiological studies of pathogenic organisms. Then comes the thin layer electrophoresis. It's done with a thin layer of silica or alumina. Alumina advantages are less time consuming, good resolution. Applications are widely used in combined electrophoretic chromatography studies in two dimensional studies of D, uh, proteins and nucleic acid hydrosylates. So cellulose uh, acetate electrophoresis, it contains 2 to 3 uh, acetyl groups per glucose unit and its option uh, capacity is less than that of paper. Uh, it gives sharp bands and gives provides a uh, good background for staining glycoproteins. It's mainly done to check for the glycoproteins, the cellulose acetate electrophoresis. Um, advantages, high voltage can be applied uh, to enhance the resolution, give sharp bands wide range of particle size and layer thickness is possible disadvantage is expensive uh, presence of sulfonic acid uh, carboxylic residue causes induced electromosis electrosmosis during the electrophoresis it has clinical and biological protein uh, samples are used in this uh, in this case and it's a quite good alternative to paper electrophoresis then moving boundary electrophoresis method uh, it's a second type now the it's in this moving boundary boundary electrophoresis uh, allows the charge species to migrate in free moving solutions without supporting the medium so in instrumentations we use u-shaped glass cells of rectangular cross section this u-shaped uh, rectangular sections with electrode place one of the each limbs of the cells electrode placed on the each limb of the cells sample solution is introduced at the bottom or through the side arms uh, either at from the bottom we put the sample inlet or from the top and the apparatus is placed at a constant temperature of 40 degrees celsius around 40 degrees celsius regularly and detection is done by refractive index to the solution uh, by refractive index you can observe uh, how much your uh, differentiation is happening in that case so advantages are uh, reference method for electrophoretic mobilities minute concentration of the samples can be detected disadvantage is quite costly and elaborate optical uh, systems are required and to study the homogeneity of uh, macromolecular system analysis of the complex biological mixtures then comes the capillary electrophoresis the principle behind is uh, between this is the charge mo molecules will migrate towards the opposite pole and separate from each other based on the physical characteristics Cap capillary electrophoresis has grown to become a collection of large 
a collection of a range of separation techniques which involves the application of high voltage across buffered uh, file capillaries to achieve separations. Uh, capillary electrophoresis then is a technique of performing electrophoresis in the buffer field narrow bore capillaries normally from 25 to 100 nanometer internal diameter. High voltage is applied and capillaries are typically 50 micrometer inner diameter to 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter output. So this is the main electrophoresis method is done. So you have one cathode when one is a node. Uh, the samples are done are moving here to there then there's a light source of putting uh, giving a light there that it will be given uh, attached with the photocathode data is added into computer then with the help of chart you can see the results how much peaks are there so that's the main principle in this then comes the electro osmotic flow gel uh, so, so uh, the surface of the silicate glass capillary contains negatively charged functional groups that attracts positively charged uh, counter ions the positively charged ions migrate towards the negative electrodes and carry out solvent molecules in the same directions so like this electro osmotic flow is happening there is negatively charged ions and on the top positively ions chance will, will be will be there then uh, with this in the center you will see the remaining positive and negative ions be in the center and then you can positively uh, positively charged ions move faster and negatively charged moves slower slower in this case then there is a iso uh, tac uh, iso iso tac forosis uh, which mainly depend upon the potential gradient its main principle is behind the moving boundary of electrophoresis leading uh, uh, electrolyte with a higher mobility than analytes and trailing electrolyte with the low mobilities are used solution in which uh, separations takes place is normally an aqueous medium which contains sucrose to providing a higher density to the solutions where the separation is done by the like isoelectric focusing that we discussed yesterday uh, depends upon the pH gradient how much pH is, is of your systems and technique of iso tag forosis depends upon the development of potential gradient so mainly if you have uh, three strips according to the pH it will move either to the left to the right and in center it will make a um, a pH that is neutral so your most of the samples will remain like this and then you can separate it later uh, then immuno electrophoresis it's it's a it's a it's a method of uh, separating the antigen and antibody based on their interaction with each other with the complex formation so antibodies are produced in immune, uh, immune system to respond to foreign macromolecules and each antibody specifically bind to the one specific uh, macromolecule that is antigen so this allows to check detect and quantify basics uh, uh, basics quantifications of in the complex mixture so when electrical potential is applied to study of antigen antibody reaction it is called immunoelectrophoresis uh, whereas the antibody are electrophoretically separated and antigens diffused towards each other so here you can see there is one antibody and we have antigens added there so they make an arc shape like structure and there is also with the other ones they, they are unpaired arc structures like this so the one which makes like this they make a complex uh, while running the electrophoresis and it's usually run on the 2% agar gel uh, medium antigen mixture is applied into smaller circular cut and cut out of the agar initially uh, electrophoretic separation is carried out depending upon the charge and molecular weight after the initial separation antibody mixture is then introduced into the narrow slot into the gel of about 0 0.5 to 1 centimeter from separated antigens and during this period uh, antigen components diffuse readily towards uh, towards the diffusing antibody and precipitating takes place in the elliptical arcs uh, as we can see in the in the previous part so these are various applications and disadvantages um, this we have done yesterday in quite details isoelectric focusing so I will not continue this one also this method just go through we have discussed this in details and this also 2d gel electrophoresis so that's it thank you very much so this is a small cartoon showing uh, uh, there are some DNAs came as if uh, what as a in, in a costume party and here comes our uh, restriction enzymes in also a costume party but nobody knows what the what he's really meant to do the to to do do the, to do there so just fun fun fact.
so we are done with the electrophoresis uh, part uh, I will not stop anymore and will continue with the next slides because we are we were quite far behind today's day 7 or day 6 today's day 7 uh, yeah, but your capillary has many advantages. Uh, it can. Uh, my one of my friend did in during his PhD. He he ran a lot of capillary electrophoresis, and the results that he found out was quite refined and quite quite appropriate to the to the marking that he was looking for, and and that's the main advantage. And he has also published recently one paper out of it. So that's quite advanced technique, quite precision. You have to work hard. A lot of a lot of hard work is required to do that technique. Then, then other electrophoresis. So particularly at the moment, out of all the techniques that we have studied, uh, according to your needs, according to your demand, you can use that technique for yourself. But mainly, uh, if somebody is working at that translation level, protein level, uh, Western blot will be used, or somebody wants to go for uh, at the mRNA uh, level then yeah the PCR RT PCR is going good and uh, then at the DNA level you can check via uh, electrophoresis by electrophoresis method so so I will share this also one protocol day 7 Pymol is over so blotting techniques so today is the day of uh, so that's why I kept them together so that you can understand things easily. <coughs> um, just just a second, students. I just need to get a water. Something got stuck in my throat. So, plotting techniques. So, mainly uh, we have discussed in my first lecture in the basics of molecular biology where I was telling you about various southern uh, southern blotting, northern blotting, western blotting, southern western, northern western, dot blotting, zoo blotting. So, we will go through each of them one by one uh, with their respective videos till western blotting I guess. Um, then, yeah, we will we'll see till where we can go today. So let's start with the southern blotting. So southern blotting hybridization detects target DNA mainly for the target targeting the DNA fragments that have been size fractioned by gel electrophoresis, and this technique was invented in 1975 by E. M. Southern. So main principle is that that we. Expect uh, exploit the property of radio label probe with a single standard DNA and if we want to detect the presence of a specific sequence in our mixed DNA samples then accordingly we design the probe and then we have complementary sequence to our target sequence so first in this in this step in this procedure um, in the southern blot we take DNA from the sample and is cleaved into the restriction fragments with restriction endonucleus and fragments are spread, spread apart by gel electrophoresis. First we restricted them with the restriction endonucleases and the fragments are spread apart by gel electrophoresis. Then uh, double standard DNA helix of each DNA fragments is denatured into single standard DNA by changing the pH 
and then gel is blotted with a sheet of nitrocellulose membrane then nitrocellulose membrane is added on onto that then transfer of some dna strand strands to the sheets then a probe of uh, purifying consisting uh, single dna uh, corresponding to specific gn is poured over the sheet and then nucleotide sequence complement to the probe uh, will hybridize with the probe so whatever the complementary sequence that has to be hybridized it will be added to that part then if the probe has been labeled with uh, with with the phosphorus 32 radio label if uh, it will be radioactive and sheet will be shown radioactivity on the complementary fragments by hybridizing to it so this is one small figure of it how it is done in the first we saw electrophoresis performed using the radioactive level markers as a size guide in the first lane so your samples are run then you transfer to the nitrocellulose membrane then then you separate it and then you put it in the radioactively labeled nucleic acids then rinsed it then you can see your bands that you're looking for this is the molecular band size markers hybridized nucleic acids and the film so information that you can get out of the southern blotting what uh, you know all in all you can learn about the uh, how many particular genes are present how many copies are present in the genome of organisms degree of similarity between the chromosomal gene and probe sequence is present whether the rearrangement has been done in, during the cloning process um, various uses uh, as such you can use it for the gene discovery gene mapping analyze the genetic pattern of our organisms to check the gene mutations deletions duplications gene arrange, uh, rearrangements involved in disease and uh, also to detect various cancers and genetic diseases such as monoclonal uh, leukemia population sickle cell mutations all these is possible because of southern blotting so one video regarding the same I think there is no sound for this so first load your samples with re restriction enzymes treated in 0 0.8 uh, TB gel So once the gel is run, you put denaturing solution, sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride and you shake it for 30 minutes. Then neutralizing solutions were added. Remove the other denaturing buffer. Then add neutralizing solution that is stress NaCl with pH 7.0. Then southern transfer. So place Wattman paper. and soak the filter paper in transfer buffer 10x place two sheets of wet water paper there then place your gel on top and then uh, nitrocellulose membrane or nylon membrane you can put on top then then put sheets of wet Wattman paper then remove any air bubbles then cover the plastic wrap put some paper towel some weights on top so that 
the it could transfer your gel your all the dna molecules could be transferred to the nitrocellulose membrane that nylon membrane sorry so take that membrane and rinse in the success ssc buffer and place the membrane under uv translimulator to cross link then comes the hybridization method so pre uh, hybridized membrane put in the pre hybridization buffer put this membrane to the pre hybridization buffer like this So you add your probes, isotopic label CCTVs. Then again, hybridize overnight. Now remove the solution. Wash the membrane with the wash buffer, 2x SSC with 0.1% SDS. So 52 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and we repeat this wash for 3 times. So now membrane is ready to expose after the hybridization. So that's it. You can see the results then band to be there. How much bands will be available? I think that's it. There's nothing much. So this was something about uh, southern blotting, how it is done. Um, now comes the northern blotting so basically bache, these all techniques are very simple when it comes to done you just need one protocol in your hand and and anyone anyone can do all any techniques whatever the techniques that i have told you is just like cooking uh, it's just like cooking your house made food dal chawal rice and uh, rice and pulses pulses yeah so it's just like that you just need to know the recipe boil the rice boil the pulses and just put some uh, spices to that then it's good to eat so same way these all techniques are also similar to that if you see the analogy you just need the recipe of it like what things has to be at what time for how long you have to do it and you can do them so they are quite straightforward so all molecular biology techniques all science behind this uh, it's 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 very simple and straightforward anyone can do that but it's all about then smart being smart uh, scientist how you manage the things how you do which experiments are required at what time to make make your uh, results more interesting to be more powerful 
to be more influence influential for the audience so these all all these things matters then so uh, learning techniques is good uh, to learn the basic behind the principle um, but to use them wisely where and, and when uh, that's the thing that's the key so now comes the northern plotting uh, in the northern plotting uh, is, a, is a simple uh, method in which we have extension of southern blotting in which instead of DNA we work measure the RNA in this case so RNA molecules are separated by size and detected on the membrane using a hybridization probe again here in this case with a base sequence complemented to all part of the sequence of length. So, so in this case uh, the first step that we do is the RNA is isolated from the samples then RNAs are separated according to the size of the agarose gel then gel is blotted with the nylon membrane, nitrocellulose membrane then the membrane is placed on the dish containing hybridization method with a label probe uh, then uh, RNA pro uh, blots are most usually probed with the cDNA fragments the membrane is washed to remove unbounded probes then the label probe is detected via uh, arteriorheograph uh, and then you can see check things on the with the bands which bands are coming so information that we see in the northern blotting is uh, uh, differential expression patterns of particular genes in which tissue uh, what is expressing uh, if it is expressed during certain stages of development if it is under the different conditions treatment of the cells so whether the genomic DNA probe has uh, regions that are transcribed so all matters in this so uses uh, what are the applications of northern blotting it allows by the researchers to check the particular gene expression patterns uh, to check the wide variety of practical applications uh, which comes from to check the gene expression in the cell tissues or, or the patients undergoing treatment or cell of different developmental stages it helps to detect the size of RNA how much size is the DNA uh, size is there to know the function of unknown proteins this also helps uh, to know about that it also helps to observe the splice products alternate splice pr products using the pros of the partial homology so some video about this I think it's so prepare your RNA sample for loading so formal formamide uh, is added formaldehyde is added mops are added so there are the four different chemicals so these are your virtual labs going on if you have been in the lab we could have shown you while how it is done then add the loading dye to the RNA then load samples in the formaldehyde across gel close it, run the gel same like DNA case get it out and have a photo of it so here you can see the samples being run then comes the northern transfer the same way like the previous one we did place Wattman paper add your 10x uh, SSC buffer 